Welcome to our review of Susan Slept Here, a 1954 movie filled with funny, shocking, and sad moments. Stay tuned for some interesting facts. Can you share a personal story of how this movie has inspired or impacted your life? Is there a particular scene or moment in this movie that has had a lasting impact on you? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Now, let's dive in. Susan Slept Here is a classic comedy film about a Hollywood screenwriter who unexpectedly finds himself taking care of a teenage girl named Susan as he tries to manage his newfound responsibility, hilarity, and chaos ensue. The movie is filled with witty dialogue, quirky characters, and unexpected twists. Despite its comedic tone, the film also touches on deeper themes of loneliness and the complexities of human relationships. So grab your popcorn and get ready for a roller coaster of emotions. Stay tuned for more interesting insights and facts about Susan Slept Here. Right Parts Wrong Actor's presence an amusing farce with unexpected sexual innuendos for its time, but suffers from improper casting. The age disparities among the actors detract from the credibility of their characters. Dick Powell, portraying a 35-year-old writer despite being 50, and Debbie Reynolds, a 17-year-old delinquent played by a 22-year-old, are notable examples. And Francis, age 24, similarly struggles to convince as a 35-year-old fiancé. Even supporting roles like Marlene, also 24, as a neighbor presumed to be around 30, contribute to the issue. Only Alvy Moore, approximately the right age at 33, manages to fit his role as Virgil, the gopher and friend. Despite the efforts of the cast, the improper casting hampers the film's effectiveness. Delightful movie to watch Christmas. Eve even if dated today presents another Frank Tashlin farce, set in LA on Christmas Eve, featuring Debbie Reynolds as the youthful delinquent and Dick Powell as her unlikely guardian. Though dated with its 1950s aesthetic and dialogue, the film retains a charming appeal, especially for a Christmas Eve viewing. Alvy Moore's portrayal as the quirky sidekick adds to the enjoyment, along with a memorable cameo by Red Skelton at the end. Despite its age, the film remains a cozy and entertaining choice, perfect for the holiday season. Amidst the chaos of unexpected departures and prior commitments, the production team faced a daunting task finding replacements for key roles in their project. When one actor left due to a play in New York, and another had prior commitments with 20th Century Fox, it sent shockwaves through the team. However, a glimmer of hope emerged when Don Cornell's song Hold My Hand became a hit, injecting optimism into the project. Despite the challenges, the team persevered, reevaluating their options and making adjustments to accommodate the changes. As they worked through the casting puzzle, the dynamics of the film shifted, leading to schedule changes, script revisions, and adjustments in creative direction. Despite the hurdles, the team remained determined to deliver a memorable movie. In the end, their hard work paid off, and the production exceeded expectations. Despite the setbacks, the spirit of the project endured, leaving a lasting impact on audiences. This story of overcoming obstacles serves as a reminder of the resilience of those involved in bringing stories to life on the big screen. In his final acting role, Dick Powell starred in a color film, a unique departure from his previous works. The movie stirred controversy in Chicago, earning an adults-only label from the censor board, despite objections from Harriet Parsons, who argued that other censors saw no issue with its content. Mickey Rooney was almost cast in the role of Virgil. In Susan Slept Here, the age dynamics among the main characters were quite different from what they portrayed on screen. Dick Powell, who played a character claiming to be 29, but was actually 35, was 49 in reality. Debbie Reynolds, portraying a scandalously underage 17-year-old, was actually 22 during filming. And Frances, Powell's supposedly age-appropriate fiancé, was only 24, just two years older than Reynolds. During the opening narration, an Oscar statuette references Loella, a nod to gossip columnist Loella Parsons, who was the mother of the film's producer, Harriet Parsons. Dick Powell, one of the main actors in Susan Slept Here, was later affected by the 1956 film The Conqueror which was filmed near a nuclear test site in Utah. Many involved with the film, including Powell, eventually died of cancer, possibly caused or exacerbated by their work on the movie. Others affected included actors John Wayne, Susan Hayward, Ted DeCorsia, and Agnes Moorhead. However, Powell's widow, June Allison, mentioned in a 2001 interview with Larry King that Powell died of lung cancer caused by chain-smoking cigarettes.
Debbie Reynolds later admitted having a mad crush on Dick Powell. He taught me common courtesy and to treat my crew and colleagues with equal respect. This film was shot and intended for release in 3D, but by the time it was completed, the brief mid-50s craze for three-dimensional movies had passed. Cary Grant and Robert Mitchum were considered for the lead role. In the story, the mother of the producer appeared as herself. The unique car driven by the main character was actually owned by the actor who played him. This car was a rare model made in the early 1950s. Interestingly, the film received criticism for its suggestive title from a group called the Catholic Legion of Decency. This backlash affected how much money the movie made. It's worth noting that a similar situation happened with another film a few years earlier. This led to questions about the credibility of the Legion. In this film, Dick Powell makes his final appearance after a long career spanning over two decades. He didn't sing in the movie, but showcased his dancing skills in a segment featuring Debbie Reynolds. The reference to Mr. Roberts adds a layer of connection with Albie Moore, who plays Virgil, having performed in the Broadway play. Interestingly, the voices of Dawes Butler and June Foray, famous for their work in cartoons, are heard as TV actors, though they are not seen on screen. It's a unique blend of talent that adds depth to the film. Influenced by the use of multiple cameras in live television drama, the director used more than one camera in filming scenes. When switching angles, flawless continuity was maintained, including perfect lip syncing of the dialogue. This technique was later employed in many Jerry Lewis movies. RKO borrowed Debbie Reynolds from MGM and Anne Francis from 20th Century Fox for the production. As a display of the prudishness of the era, the Chicago Censor Board designated the film as adults only, which was protested by the producer, pointing out that no other censors had objected to the content. In Virgil's naval uniform, he's seen as a lieutenant with ribbons for the Navy Cross, Purple Heart, China Service, Asiatic Pacific Campaign, World War II Victory, and Navy Occupation Service Medals. The ribbons are slightly out of order, and notably absent is the American Campaign Ribbon. Debbie Reynolds appreciated the film, noting its financial success and its role in pulling RKO out of financial trouble before Howard Hughes sold the studio. A long-faced expressionist wall painting scene in Mark's apartment was also featured in the black and white film The Big Knife in Charlie Castle's living room. In a surprising turn of events, it's revealed that during the filming of the movie, one of the main actors unexpectedly suffered a personal tragedy, casting a shadow over the production. Despite the upbeat nature of the film, this behind-the-scenes sorrow adds a poignant layer to Susan Slept Here. Delving into the narrative of the film, we find ourselves immersed in the story of a Hollywood screenwriter named Mark Christopher, who finds himself entangled in an unusual situation when a juvenile delinquent named Susan lands on his doorstep. Despite initial misgivings, Mark soon finds himself forming a bond with Susan, leading to unexpected twists and turns in their relationship. As the plot unfolds, viewers are drawn into a blend of comedy and drama as Mark navigates the complexities of his newfound role as Susan's guardian while also grappling with his feelings for her. The film's exploration of themes such as love, responsibility, and redemption resonates with audiences, making it a memorable cinematic experience. Directed by Frank Tashlin, the film boasts a talented cast including Dick Powell and Debbie Reynolds, whose performances breathe life into the characters they portray. Powell's portrayal of Mark exudes charm and wit while Reynolds shines in her role as the spirited Susan, capturing the audience's hearts with her endearing innocence. Despite the passage of time, Susan Slept Here remains a timeless classic, remembered not only for its engaging storyline and memorable performances, but also for the bittersweet trivia surrounding its production, serving as a reminder of the human elements that shape the world of cinema.